Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. In this video, I'm going to look at the opinions of 30 well-known Catholics on the subject of the apparitions at Medjugorje. I'm going to move each of these figures, move their head, these well-known Catholic figures, into these three categories. Whether what they have said is suggesting that they have a tendency to believe the authenticity of the apparitions, or conversely, whether what they've said seems to be that they don't believe the apparitions, or the third category, where there just isn't enough evidence. It's not clear what this person thinks about Medjugorje. Uh, it should be an interesting video, and I'm going to leave pinned in the comment section if there's any new information as things, as time goes on, because, you know, I've done my best. I've really researched into these characters. It's taken a lot of time. And so I hope that I'm not going to do anyone injustice here. I'm going to err on the side of caution. So let's kick it off then. Pope Benedict, the first individual. Well, in fact, Pope Benedict, according to interviews with the bishops of Mostar, what they've told us, Pope Benedict personally uh, tended towards a negative view of the apparitions of Medjugorje. And one of my friends who worked uh, or knew the Pope closely also repeated that sentiment to me that the Pope, Pope Benedict as Pope, he did not take a positive view when he was working at the CDF or as Pope that there was truth in the apparitions at Medjugorje. Second up, we've got Elias, known as Brother Elias. In fact, in his so-called Apparitions of Our Lady, he acknowledges the truth of the Apparitions of Our Lady at Medjugorje. I know he's not really a, like a practicing Catholic, Elias, but he's a famous guy. He's got a lot of subscribers. He's positive. He leans towards belief. Okay, Father Casey. Father Casey, breaking into the habit. I'm sure you've watched his videos. Well, he's a Franciscan, and I look for his Twitter feed, his YouTube channel, and unfortunately, I don't know either way whether Father Casey Cole is a supporter, a believer in Medjugorje or not. May God bless him. Uh, we don't know as of yet his opinion on Medjugorje. Father Donald Calloway. Now, you probably know his view on Medjugorje. He's a strong believer in the apparitions of Medjugorje. He says that his vocation to the sacred priesthood came through Our Lady of Medjugorje. Next up, Father Nicholas Gruner, the great apostle of Fatima. He believed in Garabandal. He believed in Akita. He did not believe in Medjugorje. He thought it was a diabolical distraction from the message of of Fatima, the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart. Next up, Father Mark Goring. Um, I've been watching his channel a long time, and you'll know as well as I do that he also leans towards a positive view of the authenticity of Our Lady's so-called apparitions there, doing videos anticipating the miracles, the revealing of the secrets, etc., etc. And a lot of people are watching those videos. May God bless you, Father Mark. Keep up your great apostolate. Now, Father Mike, Father Mike Smith, I listen to his sermons every week. What a great priest. What a great preacher. Uh, what can we say? Well, you know, at one point, Father Mike issued a Twitter uh, a tweet in which he gave some uh, encouragement. He retweeted. He retweeted. That's the word I'm looking for. He retweeted a book that was against Medjugorje. Um, by E. Michael Jones, but the tweet was subsequently deleted, and and also in some of the replies, someone asked him, you know, some people didn't like his, some people didn't like the tweet, and he said, "I'm open." He said, "I'm open." So you know, he has not uh, gone on either side at this point. Next up, this is Father Gabriel Amorf. Father Gabriel Amorf previously was known, everyone knew him, as this chief exorcist, this famous exorcist. Well, there was some kind of quote that he did. He boasted of doing like a thousand exorcisms in a week or something. It sounded a bit weird. But he is a famous exorcist and, and everyone knew him in the 90s especially and then the 2000s. Positive. He said that the Medjugorje apparitions are a bulwark against Satan in the world. Uh, he's definitely positive. Next up, maybe you don't know this guy, but this is Monsignor Gemma, Andrea Gemma, an archbishop in Italy and another chief exorcist. It's like him and a morph were like not rivals, <laughs> but they were both exorcists, big known exorcists in Italy. And whereas a morph said 
the Medjugorje was a bulwark against Satan, Gemma, Archbishop Gemma, said, no, they're of Satan. So he is in the negative side. And it's interesting that, isn't it? Two exorcists, prominent exorcists, have radically different views on these so-called apparitions. Next up, this is Jim Caviezel, uh, the guy who played our blessed Lord in The Passion of the Christ. And he has a very positive view of Medjugorje. He went there. He said Passion of Christ wouldn't have happened if he had not been to Medjugorje. I think maybe he returned to his faith there, something like that. One of my friends told me that he even brought Mel Gibson on a trip to Medjugorje. That's something my friend told me. I haven't verified that. I wonder what Mel made of Medjugorje. He wouldn't have been able to go to the old mass there. Maybe he had a good time, though. Um, you know, there's some nice restaurants in Medjugorje, some nice hotels. Um, okay, next up, this is Patrick Coffin. I'm sure many of you watch his channel, uh, Coffin Nation. Um, Patrick Coffin, he's got does some great interviews. And as you'll know from his excellent interviews and the fact that he's forwarded a book against Medjugorje, he's got a negative view. Strong doubts of the authenticity. He's interviewed uh, Anthony Foley, isn't it? Um, or is it Donald Foley? I'm maybe getting the name wrong. He He's a very uh, knowledgeable man on Medjugorje who studied the phenomenon from the very beginning and has produced a thorough book uh, showing, uh, arguing the case against your visitisty of Medjugorje. Next up, His Holiness John Paul II, uh, celebrated in the New Rite as Saint John Paul II, Pope, a great, a holy man. I don't think anyone can doubt his personal holiness, even though he clearly made mistakes in his life. Um, and on the subject of Medjugorje, some people debate whether his opinion was unclear or negative, but I think it was positive. Medjugorje was in the mainstream in his pontificate. He could have closed it down and he didn't. He, and in the remarks he's given to the bishops of Mostar, it sounded as if... It sounds as if he personally had a kind of belief in Medjugorje. He was good friends with this theologian, uh, Laurentine, who was another supporter of Medjugorje, and also von bon Balthazar, a supporter of Medjugorje. I've not included them both here, but they could have been on this list. I personally think, and some of the little remarks Pope John Paul II gave privately, I think it's fair to say that he did lean towards belief in the authenticity of Medjugorje. Next up, Patrick Madrid, famous apologist, writer, defender of the Catholic faith. Again, he's in the negative camp. You can look up on his blog. Uh, he has been on the negative side, having doubts, serious doubts about the authenticity of the apparitions. Next up, Malachi Martin, uh, famous for, well, books and for his Art Bell interviews. And if you've watched the interviews, like I have spending hours watching some of those things, he's got a negative view. He thinks it's a distraction. Diabolical, I think he, he even says. Next up, Father James Martin, SJ. Interestingly, he has mentioned Medjugorje in his tweets. I was hunting around today trying to find out where he stands on the issue. And he's tweeted a bit about Medjugorje, but he hasn't actually come down on either side. I wondered personally, because Our Lady of Medjugorje has never mentioned homosexuality, never spoken it as uh, as their actions are sinful or anything like that, maybe he's kind of, you know, maybe he likes that. And maybe it's uh, an apparition that supports uh, his agenda, promotion of LGBT, whatever, ideology within the church. But, you know, the tweets, the tweets he said were neither positive nor negative. And I think I'm going to have to put him down in the unclear unknown one. This guy here is Mark uh, Miravale, I think his name is pronounced. A really great theologian, I think he's at Steubenville. He's written some amazing stuff on Our Lady and really beautiful videos on Mary Mediatrix for Graces. He's positive. He he supports Medjugorje. He thinks it somehow fits in with the theology of Mary Mediatrix, even though Our Lady actually denies she's Mediatrix for all graces at Medjugorje, or at least in some of the, the quotations I've seen. Next up, Mother Angelica. Well, it's quite hard to find her position on Medjugorje. I grew up uh, in the 2000s mainly, and I remember, however, seeing some old stuff when I was watching EWTN, when she did have people on her show supporting Medjugorje, and she was clearly someone who supported it. For some reason, 
a lot of this stuff is harder to find online now, but definitely back in the day, Mother Angelica, she certainly seemed to me as someone who leant towards uh, believing the authenticity of those apparitions. And maybe someone in the comments will be able to help me out further. St. Padre Pio, obviously he didn't, he didn't say anything about it. He had passed away, I think, was it 68? Uh, his holy, holiness passed away, Padre Pio. He didn't say anything about Medjugorje. I just put him in for fun. Pope Francis, you know, people can say Pope Francis, do we know his opinion? Is it positive? He's established this commission to look at Medjugorje. Actually, I think it's negative. The one time he's personally been asked, what do you think about Mount Medjugorje? He actually replied quite straightforwardly, no, I personally don't really believe these apparitions. I don't think Our Lady's like a, like a mailman bringing messages every day. Certainly not this kind of dull message. You know, he's come down pretty strongly. And Pope Francis is not afraid to say his views on certain matters. I imagine if you're at the dinner table with Pope Francis and you get on the subject of Medjugorje, uh, he'll have plenty of things to say. And, and you'll all have to kind of laugh and join in with the joke and everything because he's a Pope, you know. You want to be careful uh, getting on his bad side, I would say. Next up, this here is it's not really a person. It is the shield of the Diocese of Mostar, where the apparitions, alleged apparitions, have taken place. And you won't be surprised to hear that that has been negative. Certainly, especially the first two bishops, two bishops, uh, when the apparitions kicked off up until 2020, were very vocal in their opposition even putting on the front page of the diocesan website, Mary is not appearing in Medjugorje. The most recent uh, bishop of this diocese hasn't said so much. A newspaper, uh, a newspaper argued that actually he does have the same opinion of his predecessors and he's kept that private because actually the Vatican has taken away some of his authority over this area and so he's obviously doing the right thing and he's not being as prominent as his predecessors who were responsible for the area okay next up scott hahn dr scott hahn as he's known um dr scott hahn i think he's still a steubenville professor of theology on the internet you'll find at one point some people will think he's positive towards medjugorje because he has led pilgrimages there he works for a pilgrimage company like a lot of these catholic speakers they do a few pilgrimages in the summer holidays it gets them a few pennies i suppose and it's a lot of fun leading pilgrimages i've done a couple myself and he led a pilgrimage that went to medjugorje but you know so did i so did i and i don't really believe in the authenticity i'd certainly be putting myself more in this category than this one I think that we can't draw from the fact that Scott Hahn went to Medjugorje with a pilgrimage group that he actually believes them. He certainly never uh, put his uh, card down clearly, put his flag in the sand on this subject. I think we've got to put him in the, in the unknown one. This is uh, Sean Byrne, um, Cardinal Sean Byrne, famous because he was involved with editing the new catechism, right? Back in the 90s, people thought this guy was like John Paul II, you know, right-hand man, theologically right down the line. In recent years, over the Amoris Laetitia thing, he his uh, kind of conservative Catholic clout, uh, his stock of value has fallen a bit. But in the Medjugorje world, he's risen because he is a supporter of the apparitions and their authenticity. What you'll find is there's very few bishops who have said anything about these apparitions. I searched for Pell, I searched for Burke, I searched for Snyder, I searched looking even, I searched for quite a few different bishops to see if they had said anything about Medjugorje. Most bishops are keeping quiet about this. Most bishops think we lead this to the Diocese of Mostar. It's up to them to be investigating this. But Sean Byrne has said positively his support, his belief in Medjugorje. This is Sister Breege McKenna. She was famous back in the day and maybe more in England and Ireland than in the US. Uh, Miracles Do Happen was her famous book. An Irish nun, a bit of a charismatic nun, and like many in the charismatic movement, tends towards, strongly believes in the truth of the apparitions of Our Lady at Medjugorje. Next up, Sister Lucy. Sister Lucy of Fatima. Uh, is this the first Sister Lucy or the second Sister Lucy? <laughs> I don't believe in that. I think there's one Sister Lucy. Now, the Sister Lucy, 
Uh, some people have said that she believed in Medjugorje. Someone was saying, oh yes, Sister Lucy, I went to the convent and visited her, and she said, oh yes, Medjugorje. But there's no evidence on There's no real evidence, however, that Sister Lucy believed in the apparitions of Our Lady in Medjugorje. That's just a couple of people uh, making rumours. There's, there's no actual written, uh, concrete, recorded, interviewed message saying that she believed in Medjugorje. And I think it's quite doubtful, seeing as Our Lady at Medjugorje has never mentioned uh, anything to do with Fatima, really. See my video on uh, Is Medjugorje a Continuation of the Message of Fatima? Next up, Taylor Marshall. The big guns now. Uh, Taylor Marshall. Remember, I used to watch him on the, uh, was it New St. Thomas Institute? Some great stuff on St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, I can't always watch the long episodes now of his uh, podcast, but, you know, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. And He's never spoken. I looked hard as I could today. I, sp I, wait I spent a lot of time looking at these people today. Maybe some of you will do better, but I look for his Twitter. I look for his YouTube. I um, went through the book Infiltration, searching through it. Couldn't find a mes mention of Medjugorje. On the positive side, any tending towards positivity, is the fact that, yeah, he's interviewed... Um, Mark Goring on his show, and I think he's had Calloway, Father Calloway on his show. But, you know, you can interview all kinds of people. It doesn't mean that you believe everything they say. Generally, he's he's just not spoken about Medjugorje. I think that he's not the kind of person that shies away, sh shies away from controversial subjects. So I expect in the future he will reveal where he stands on Medjugorje and, and we'd have to move him. But I'll put that in the, the, the uh, message section below. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Again, we don't have that much to go on for her view on Medjugorje, but a few people reliably seem to have said that she was a believer in Medjugorje. She never went there. I don't think she read up on it that much, but she certainly was pictured with calendars of Our Lady of Medjugorje, and she said that she prayed a Hail Mary to Our Lady of Medjugorje every day. You know, I think I think she leaned towards a belief in the authenticity. Who's this guy? This is Roberto Mancini. The uh, at this moment in time, the the coach of the Italian national football team uh, that just defeated England in the Euros finals. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I was looking for famous people that had made any statement on Medjugorje, and this guy is a firm believer in Medjugorje. He's met with the so-called visionaries. He's been there quite a lot of times. I didn't even know he was a practicing Catholic, but. You know, I kind of liked him uh, as uh, the Italian coach there. I thought he was a, a nice guy. He seemed like a good-natured man. And he's a believer in Medjugorje. Next up, Vigano or Vigano, however you want to pronounce it. Probably, I think it's Vigano. Now, he, Archbishop Vigano, he, he, some of you might say unclear, no opinion. But the, the fact is, when he was the, whatever it was called in the US, the chief ambassador of the Holy See, he he made, made a very strong condemnation of the visit, I think, of Ivan to the USA. You might say he was just doing his job, but I think that the way he responded to Ivan trying to come to the US suggested a personal, more than suggested, I think it was quite strong, the idea that he personally did not believe in the authenticity of these apparitions or the phenomenon, because Ivan had toured many countries and he hadn't had the kit back that Vigano managed to orchestrate for him. So I think that is a strong doubt of authenticity on behalf of Vigano. Next one, Trad Catholic Knight. You'll have seen some of his videos perhaps on YouTube. Um, I don't always agree with Trad Catholic Knight, but I'm glad he's there. And again, he is negative. He's definitely negative. He's got a, a, a web page, a, a page on his website, giving loads of arguments against the veracity of Medjugorje, really uh, showing a number of different videos, pointing you to that famous instance when, when the baby Jesus, Our Lady, apparently is dropping the baby Jesus. So he's definitely against, does not accept the authenticity of Medjugorje. And last but not least, Michael Voris. From the vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. As you know, he does not believe in the authenticity of Medjugorje. And he's done a few shows where he has again exposed factors of Medjugorje that tend towards not believing 
in those apparitions there. So there we go, 30 well-known Catholics and their different views on Our Lady's apparitions at Medjugorje. What to take away from this? Confusion, confusion, the confusion particularly over the fact that you've got theologians, exorcists, popes, apologists on both sides of this, you know, and some that haven't taken a stand on it. Um, it's confusing, it's confusing. And what to make of it personally, Maybe I'll save that for another video, but it just shows a confusion in the different positions of the, the influential, important Catholics and where they stand on Medjugorje. Admittedly, some of these guys, their opinions are not that strong in, in the particular camps and they would be willing to move to any other camp uh, with the evidence or maybe under further investigation. And some have passed away now and they know the truth. Uh, either way, they know the truth. So what to take away from this? I think personally, let's stick to Our Lady of Fatima, the message of Fatima. That was in many ways what Father Garuna said. He didn't want to get sidetracked with Medjugorje because Fatima had still not been responded to properly. And I think that's a really wise position to take. Focus on the message of Fatima, which there's no doubt about. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.